Oh, the next match was the... And folks, we don't have the ratings yet. This was just last night. It's still early in the day after, and we're, we're cranking this stuff out for the holidays. So we don't have the ratings, but we predict that right here is where a cataclysm happened of epic proportions to send the Nielsen families into a tailspin. It was a match where the winner gets a title shot against Tony Storm with Soraya versus Riho. Brian, how much did they sign the former Paige for for her to be the star of the women's division who came in with incredible fanfare, if not trumpets and drum beats and I don't know what, cowbell, whatever else, and the, they built a group around her and it was a game changer and now she's on free television putting over Rio. Tony just set fire to the money. It's quicker. Well, to be fair, Tony gave her a lot of money, but he was also negotiating against WWE who were offering nothing. Well, speaking of offering nothing, I feel bad for Soraya and I don't even like her. But here, this not only was ridiculous, it's a joke. It's a joke. I'm sorry. It's a joke. Riho is not a wrestler. She's a fucking special interest of Kenny's and there's some mass hypnosis going on that everybody else in this company just tolerates this, but it's, it's embarrassing, but now it's dangerous because what did Paige retire from the wrestling business from and was told that she could be potentially paralyzed or use the use of lose the use of her extremities what was that injury, Brian? Well, her name is Soraya now, but I believe that was a broken neck. Yeah, well, did you see the spot where she actually let this four foot nine, 89 pound, mousy little thing give her a belly to belly overhead northern light suplex with a bridge and almost land her right on top of her head, a la the Ridge Holland Big E? incident of about a year ago yeah so i watched his match twice uh, uh, why why would you go for so, somebody that much smaller than you and it's it doesn't even mathematically make sense that she can be turned properly or or take it over properly and it, it she almost put her right on her fucking head the crowd ooed it was so close it was obvious without even Taz, who really saw what happened, almost having a shit fit in his voice. And then, after she does that, Riho just pushed her with one hand, and Soraya rolled a turn toward the corner to get into the right spot, and then put her arms in between her legs, tucked herself, and stayed stock still, muttering a silent prayer without moving a muscle or even a hair as Riho went up to the top rope and gave her a double stomp off the top rope and then didn't cover her. Soraya then sits straight up, just does a sit up and scoots on her ass into position. Obviously for Riho to give her a running knee and then Rio covers her one, two, three. So not only was it embarrassing to watch if you care about the wrestling industry or embarrassing if you care about Soraya, but Soraya was embarrassed and was just going through the motions trying to get it over with without letting this fucking little goof hurt her. It was that obvious. Go back and watch before that double stomp off the top and watch her just roll there, move her hair out of her eyes and tuck and fucking brace. Good God. And then, Riho beat up Tony Storm too. When she got in until Mariah May came and saved Tony, and Riho was left standing in the ring like she was Hacksaw Duggan with a two before, instead of fucking Riho in an ill-fitting tutu. You watched it twice. What did I miss there? I did. I uh, I really dig her style. Her lace dicky is always on point. 
Um, I didn't realize that she had ever been a sampler of Dickies. The match was so bad, I had to watch it a second time just to see how bad it was. It was one of those things. Soraya's limited because of everything that's happened. Her biggest benefit, I guess, would be her personality. And you had her in there with Riho. And if you really stop and you can stop drinking the Kool-Aid and watch her, her stuff looks bad. It's the ultimate in a cooperative match because otherwise it doesn't exist. Right. And her stuff just doesn't look good. It's the epitome of someone who can copy the moves they see on TV and kick out. Like I said before, if you can just get that shoulder up at two and a half, you're halfway to being on AEW TV. That's all it takes to get at least a three-star match. Just kick out a few times. Other than that, it's ridiculous. And I see other people say, well, Jim doesn't say this about... Yeah, Jim says it about everyone who's small. And some of them I disagree with. Because I think sometimes the right small person, it works. With Rio, it doesn't. She's ridiculous. And she's smaller than everyone there. And she gets a renewed push every couple of years. I don't know if this is where the ratings are going to die. It may die during Jay Lethal versus uh, Mark Briscoe because of how they've been used. No, it, I mean, it'll it'll go down there, but it'll drop off a cliff on this one because that was early enough in the program. They could still think, well, we might see something. What What is that? They put Rio at the 9 o'clock hour two weeks in a row. And she didn't do anything special last week at the 9 o'clock Oh, that's hour. I didn't even mention that. Was the, this was also the 9 o'clock hour. Yeah. Because somebody is delusional and, and Tony is too nice to not put up with it. I don't know how else to explain it. There, I'm sure, are a number of people in the locker room who realize full well and are insulted by the fact that Riho is on his television program. But they can't say so because of whichever EVPs and, and Tony himself who are convinced that this is something that's ever going to happen in this fucking country. I've been consistent going back to the beginning of AEW, so I'm going to say it again here. Other than the fact that WWE had one, which started because of the Divas, and then TNA started one, and obviously Japan's been doing their own thing, when AEW started, it was automatic, they need a women's division. Even though there weren't the talented, independent women out there for them to sign and bring in right away. And there were some fans that are just over the moon about anything with women's wrestling, and are very forgiving, and were really excited about this, and still think the problem with the women's division is that Tony's not featuring them enough. Oh, good Lord. Tony should have never had a women's division. Tony should have said to Kenny and anyone else, I like women's wrestling. I'd like to support them however I can. It would benefit me not to have that division on my show. And it's getting worse and worse. WWE has the top flight women. Jamie Hayter is great, but she, we'll see if we ever see her again on this show. Yeah. But there's no reason for AEW to even Statlander, have a Statlander, yeah, when, when she gets... Uh, Statlander, when she's well, she gets a match every once in a while, and then she's relegated to standing there next to these jack-off, outlaw, mud-show goofs like Trent and Chuck and... <clears throat> and working with Rehos. I mean, that's the other... If she was in and w working with Rehos. If Statlander was in WWE, whether it was in NXT or on the main roster, again, with some exceptions, Liv Morgan's not one of the bigger... Axe, and I think Alexa Bliss, when she's there, is even smaller than her. She's probably the smallest, the most ridiculous in terms of size. But she'll be working with Rhea Ripley's and Bianca Belair's and Charlotte's, people that are bigger. Of course, there's Sasha Banks's and Becky Lynch's and other people. But in AEW, look at who she's working with. Like, look at who is there. There are some people with talent that should be in NXT, like a Julia Hart, maybe even a Sky Blue. There are other people... That just aren't very good. I'm not going to even name them right now, but there are some Abaddon. women there. Abaddon. I'm not even thinking of Abaddon, but there are some women there that are just you know, terrible. You know, when, you, when you go, when you're a kid and you get the Halloween candy and they put it in the pumpkin with the handle on it that everybody carried the Halloween candy in and then you leave it set out on the porch and you live in a warmer climate and after a couple of days you come back and you see the goddamn, <laughs> those fucking marshmallow treats. They ain't looking so good anymore because that son that was beating down on him on the porch, that's Abaddon. Well, that wasn't even my example. My point is, this women's division is horrible. The answer isn't, the answer to fix it isn't more of it. I'll just say that. 